going on there guys? I got a cool discussion uh, slash top tip top whatever video for you guys here today. It's going to be a topic of how you guys can not only help improve your collection but also something that's going to be really beneficial to you not only if you want to play retro formats, uh, if you want to play maybe current formats that require you to play some maybe potentially difficult to acquire cards or expensive cards and uh, really just uh, something that I think any collector or person that plays this game, whether it be at the casual competitive level, uh, should be doing. And that is kind of what I'm doing here. And, and I have many examples of this. I, I've done this across many different formats, retro formats, um, band cards, etc. This is just one example of it. it, is pretty much taking and in this case, it's a band box. It's basically cards that are banned. You take them, and is, whether you find them lying around your, you know, the rest of your collection, whether you, you know, have a card that's banned right now that Konami, you know, just releases a ban list, and you have a card that's banned, you take that card and you just throw it in your band box. Maybe you trade for some cards, or maybe you trade for a binder or buy a binder, or you know, if you get packs, or just any time you get any cards that are banned. Um, you just take those cards and you throw them in this box and you just leave them there no matter what rarity no matter what language um, Regardless even of the condition of the card you just take it and you throw it in there and I have tons of these boxes lying around the house um, This is just one of them. I can't, I'll kind of go through it to give you guys um, I guess kind of like a cool preview you guys can get an, a glimpse into some of the cards that I've uh, collected over the years um, This is just a small group of them uh, some band cards um, And I think this is a really beneficial video for you guys and a beneficial tip video and I'll explain a few reasons why um, of course, at the end of the video, if you guys happen to enjoy it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd very much appreciate it. You guys can get more videos from me. More deck profiles is coming next week when I get back from my vacation. When you guys are probably watching this video, I'm probably currently on my vacation. So, um, yeah, links down below, Patreon down below. Shout out to my brand new Patreon, uh, or to my patron, and my second channel, new video coming on there for Halloween this coming week. Uh, really exciting video, so make sure you guys check that out. And uh, yeah, so I guess I'll kind of just start off with like the first section of this band box as I, as I kind of talk. You guys will see some of the cards in here. So I think the advantage of having a band box, uh, number one, is that pretty much any time a card uh, be goes up in value, regardless if it's banned or not, because cards that are banned can also retain value or go up in value because of the collector market. People that don't play, maybe that just collect casually, uh, people can just buy cards randomly online. Um, those cards could just appreciate and value at any random moment. There's there's not really a set situation where a card uh, is always going to uh, you know appreciate or decline. Now, of course, if a card is newly newly uh, forbidden, so for instance, I guess if we look at the first few cards here, like when Zodiacs came out, right? Uh, we we knew eventually that when, towards the end of the deck's life cycle that the, the deck was going to get hit to some capacity, right? Well. Uh, all these cards right here aren't really worth anything, but if they ever happen to come back, they could immediately just by, you know, as a result of them coming off the ban list, people will immediately be jumping to get them, um, regardless, you know, of what they are, especially if they, if they want to get the original rarities of those cards, the original printings, not like a master collection reprint or master mega pack reprint, whatever, whatever reprint, they'll usually want the original printings of the cards to have quote unquote a higher rarity. Um, those cards will just inherently go up in value. Now over time, they'll probably decline again, but for the most part, they'll immediately shoot up. Now, um, with, with cards uh, that are on the ban list that are unlikely to get unbanned anytime soon, those cards will also retain value, like stuff like, you know, dual terminal uh, cards, you know, Lavable Chain, Degust Emerald, cards like that will inherently retain value. Maybe not their lower prints, not so much, but they'll retain value. And what's really cool is when you have a lot of these cards or you trade for them or you buy them or you pick up a collection like myself, as most people know, I, I don't really vend like at a store. I just kind of buy and sell for myself. Um, quite avidly, but especially at the local level. Um, and it helps whenever you get a collection and you have banned cards in there that you probably just can't move at that time or have no reason to move them because they could potentially go up in the future. Um, you just throw them in a banned box like this and whenever they get unbanned or whenever you know the collector market spikes on them, you simply just bust those cards out and you sell them. Now, if you're a player, um, this is really beneficial because over time you'll start to develop a habit of just taking any rarity, like whether it's you know an ultra rare snatch deal or a common snatch deal or a rare snatch deal, whatever. You'll just have the habit of taking those cards and just throwing them in uh, a band box, and it's really good for you because then you'll always have access to those cards without having to worry about them 
Um, I know a big issue in, in the community is accessibility of certain cards or older cards, especially for budget players or players that just don't necessarily have a wide array of resources. And my biggest tip to you is, um, as, as fun as trading, buying and selling is, hold out on selling cards like this or trading them away, even if you're anticipating a ban list. Um, because a lot of the times if a card is at, at the end of its life cycle, um, you, you, might, you may be able to sell it, but most of the time if people are anticipating that card might get hit, they'll pay less for it. Whereas if you just hold on to it, even if it's a couple years until it comes back or Konami decides to release it, that inherent hype of an archetype or just a, a fan favorite card like Stratos uh, will outweigh any decision making process that that person might have. And in the future, you'll be able to sell it either for that same amount that you were going to get um, or that you wanted, or you picked that card up for, or even maybe more in the future. And, and I think that's so cool because um, cards become timeless. I mean, if you look at something like Harpy's Feather Dust, I think the rares are holding a few dollars. I mean, if you look at Chaos Emperor Dragon, even the Ultras, you know, from the, the Special Edition, the Lost Millennium, those cards hold value. Even the card, the card isn't legal right now. At any point this card comes back, people will want this card. Like, they just want to be able to play it, whether it's a collector or a competitive player, it doesn't matter. Um, and I think that's one of the coolest things about having uh, a band box is is really not only do you get to kind of collect pieces of history and it, and it helps you have those cards you don't have to worry about getting them if they come back especially if it's a random card that maybe you just can't get like you just can't get it because maybe the set's out of print or maybe people have bought them all out online like it, it can become really difficult to get certain cards over time and it, it really helps you as, as a collector and as a player because you don't have to go scavenging you don't have to break apart your you know your current trade binder or your current collections or break the bank on cards that you could have just held in the first place like you don't necessarily need to always make money or make a return on something that's going to get banned you can just wait to make a long-term investment and by holding cards like this you should just look at it as exactly that a long-term investment you'll be able to uh basically have at a given point cards that just transcend time cards that transcend formats i mean imagine heavy storm comes back i mean if you just have tons of them you can easily sell different rarities of them for a good amount especially if they get unbanned you don't even necessarily need to keep them all at that point but just wait until that um right moment it's looking for that opportune time uh to to pick up and unload cards and i think with cards especially banned cards it's so easy to do because almost everyone uh, you know to some capacity has some banned cards or at least a couple banned cards in their collection uh, maybe they have them stored away in some boxes some random binders that they have you'll be able to basically just get those cards and you know if you trade for them you just put them away in a box and it'll really help you i know in my time there's so many cards that i've regretted getting rid of especially banned cards um, anytime I find a brand card, I literally just take it and throw it in one of my band boxes and, you know, hope that it comes back in the future, hope that one day I can make use of it. Um, and it really, really helps. And at the end of the day, a lot of the cards that you'll be collecting, um, they'll, they'll also retain that collectability just in lieu of being on the ban list. Um, and people might want it in the future, even if this game hypothetically died the next day. Like, the reality is, is a lot of those nostalgia cards will hold value to a lot of people. and you'll be able to make use of them. And it's really, really fun to do. It's a really easy thing to do. I know a lot of people, their concern with doing this is sometimes you'll have cards that just don't move and you don't notice the value in those cards. Like, what am I gonna do with nine million cold waves, you know, right now? Like, it's not doing much, but you never know. Like, it, if it comes back, these could easily be, you know, hypothetically three, five dollar, you know, common so, so easily, like overnight, just like that. And then you take all those cards that you probably got as throw-ins or as part of a collection or you just maybe went through scavenging through all your old bulk and commons and you turn that stuff into money or in trade bait. Like, it's so easy to do. I don't understand why people don't do it. Like, tons of times. Like, actually, this is a great example. Whenever I uh, win my locals and sometimes have, like, a bunch of leftover credit to burn and maybe I just... I, there's nothing I want to get, but I feel like splurging. I'll just look through old card cases at old locals, and um, I'll just buy random band cards. Like, look at this. I, I picked up a first edition Painful Choice for, like, two bucks in credit, which is, like, nothing. Like, uh, I picked up probably, like, a giant stack of these, like, for, you know, for nothing. Like, next to, next to nothing. Literally just free winnings. If these cards hypothetically ever come back, even if it's with an errata, people will still want the original printings of those cards. And, um... You know, they'll have that value there. It's really easy to do. And I think what's cool about this is you can do this not just for band cards, but you can also do it for formats. And an example of this, maybe, maybe I'll do a separate video on it. Maybe I'll just show you guys some other time. Probably not in this video, but like, for example, this other box here is just literally 
all just cards you could play in GOAT format. Card, like, more Heavy Storms, of course that's banned. Of course, some of this is gonna have overlap, like there's cards in, in GOAT Control in my banned box that are similar or the same, but like, Bazoos, Decoichis, like, Skellingles, like, just random cards, Sinister Serpents, like, cards like this, like, that, that you could literally take and take a giant box of this and potentially turn it into multiple decks and you can easily just resell those decks or build them and make multiple retro decks and play with your friends. It's so fun to do. Like, look at this. More cards that I probably got from locals or different local stores and tournaments over the years. Like, it's so easy to do. Like, I have multiple copies. Even if it's not a high rarity, look at this. This is a random rare, common Witch of the Black Forest, common Yadas. Any of these cards at any given point could appreciate in value. And I think it just behooves uh, any collector, any player to, to hold cards like these, um, to, to just have something where you know it's a safe investment. Even if it's a long-term investment, a slow investment, it is nonetheless an investment to some capacity. And I think uh, it's absolutely invaluable. It is, um, like, it's just random Shurits and Dejins. Like, all these cards that even are, if they're not high rarity or expensive right now, they could just easily go up in value. Look at this, multiple Harpies Feather Dusters and all, sort, all sorts of rarities. Um, and this isn't to, like, show this off, but this is, I mean, to some extent it is because I think a lot of people don't do this and um, it'll, I think it'll just make your life so much easier if you're a player like it, because think of it this way if let's say you don't have like a huge band collection right now right if you start piecing out and, and picking up all these random band cards not I'm not saying right now splurge and just get as many band cards as you can I'm saying over time if they just happen to fall into your lap throw them into a band box because I, I guarantee you um, later on when you need those cards or if you happen to need them or someone else needs them and you want to make some money It'll be a lot easier than having to get them on the spot And it's just it becomes invaluable at that point like look at this, there's tons of royal oppressions tons of them and, and you never know when someone might want a specific rarity. This is why I also said uh, Don't worry about the rarity of the card someone might want a gold rare someone might want a champion pack common Someone might want a rare from legacy of darkness or DB2 like whatever rarity throw it in here and another thing is don't worry about the condition because there's a lot of cards, especially a lot more of the higher end cards. Um, for instance, some of the dual terminal cards or some of the like high collectability cards, you know, the Chaos Emperor Dragons. Um, you know, the, 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 you know, for example, Stratos is like even if they were damaged before they got unbanned, uh, you could still sell them, even light plays or moderately plays. You could take those cards and they still hold value because there's that nostalgia, there's that collectability, and usually with banned cards, there's also that playability to some extent. And, um, I mean, True King Lithosagem, like, maybe one day this card will come back, like, you never know, like, if even if you just had tons of these, I know I have, like, a giant, like, stack of probably, like, 150, 200 of these, and, and you know, I, I know even before that I probably had, like, four or five hundred of them, and I was easily selling them when this card was legal for a couple bucks a pop, at one point they were, like, two, three dollars each. And I picked up all those literally just from bulk that people were leaving uh, whenever I was opening packs and stuff at locals. But obviously now there's every pack has like kind of like supers in it and, and at least a hollow. Um, and especially if there's like commons that end up being banned in the future. Like anytime you can just collect cards like that, they can appreciate and value. You're not, it, it doesn't hurt you because the investment is typically really minimal in most cases for like cards like this. Of course, there can be like high value investment cards, especially a lot of high rarity cards. Like obviously with like Trap Dust, you know, there's champion packs of those. Like you're not going to go and burn all your money as opposed to having like a current competitive deck or, or a playable deck that you want to use. Um, it's better to not do that. Just get, you know, low, low rarity ones because most, it's a lot easier to sell stuff like this than high rarity stuff because if a card gets unbanned, most players don't have the money just to throw at random cards like this. It'll be much more uh, cost effective and impactful for them just to take these cards and, you know, use them because they just need them or want them. Um, regardless if the card is good or not at that given point in time once it gets unbanned and I think it's really cool Especially with like goat format dragon ruler format I think I have a dragon ruler deck here that I can show you guys an example of like look at this at the end of this I have a bunch of dragon rulers like if they come back these cards even right now are holding some value Regardless of if it's rares or secrets like all these cards hold value. It's really really neat um, and, and here even in the same box I even have I think this is one of my old dragon ruler decks that I have like actually completely built um you can build these decks together and just have fun with them. Have cross ban list uh, games with your friends, have uh, maybe just like fun duels in those specific retro formats for fun. Um, it's great when a format becomes stale. Uh, all in all, I think I think it's just so, so fun to like collect cards like these. It helps you have a, a strong collection at the end of the day. And if you do this piece by piece, um, penny by penny, quarter by quarter, dollar by dollar, um, $100 by $100, eventually over time, 
it'll help you and you'll have a collection that you're not only proud of, but also you can take full advantage of not only in terms of playability, collectability, being able to make money on your initial investment, but also have potentially appreciating value. And even if it's a slow investment, I promise you guys, you will uh, thank me for it later, whether, like I said, band box, goat box, any format box, just do it. I think it's uh, a lot more beneficial than trying to go out there and later on trying to buy or trade for cards that exponentially appreciated in value, especially in like those higher rarity cards. Um, that you might have otherwise sold just to try and buy the next best deck or something like in my opinion it's kind of like that story like people always say uh it's better to have a good experience than have money so like for instance don't don't be you know overly stingy with your money or your cards um or in terms in terms of just like your money you don't need to uh to always worry about getting that high rarity sometimes you just need to worry about having the cards to play well you can always just play a low rarity deck and take all that extra money you would have spent on high rarity cards and put them into this and make that difference up and have a stronger investment, you know? So um, I know in my case, like sometimes I'll play high rarity decks, sometimes I'll just play low rarity because I don't, you know, I'd rather just take that extra money and that difference in cost that I would have paid for that high rarity deck and turn that into a cool investment, a cool experience, and just all around better my personal collection and stuff. And, and it helps if your friends need cards um, or if they need the hookups or if you have customers like myself that, that need cards. It helps a lot and I, th I think it's just an invaluable lesson and an, an invaluable uh, tool at the end of the day because this becomes a tool for you. It can make you money, it can make you uh, uh, a better, you know, uh, just in terms of collectability, you can have those cards a lot easier in terms of access and it can just make your day and life a lot easier. So that's all I want to touch on today. If you guys haven't enjoyed, just kind of taking a small glimpse at one of my many many band boxes and, and you know a small tip that may help you over time to make some money uh, get your cards a lot easier and just have them so you don't have to worry about getting them later at a higher premium um, let me know maybe you guys already do this maybe you don't I don't know I guess it varies from person to person I know I see tons of people they'll get a new deck and then they'll try and buy you know trade or sell it off for a future deck like well they might be you know great for some people I think most people should just refrain from doing that even if you don't get the next best deck immediately and it takes you longer to get it since you didn't trade or sell away your old stuff it's better just to keep that old stuff because you never know where it can go up in value um, it appreciates over time anything you know anytime Konami releases support anytime Konami releases a card off the ban list um, you never know magical things happen and I think uh, the risk is well worth the reward um, for doing something like that don't get rid of your stuff in my opinion it's basically the, the whole concept is just hoard your stuff like keep your stuff you don't need to get rid of it even if you need to or want to get something in the future and you have no other means and resources of getting it I promise you you'll get some money somehow you'll get some resources somehow but one thing is certain keep your stuff just keep it I, I think it'll help you a lot more than just getting rid of your stuff randomly so that's all I have to say for you guys. I'll see you guys. Take it easy, my friends. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, yeah, that's all I have for today. Links down below. Patreon, uh, vlog channel, slash second channel, etc. I have a cool Halloween challenge video going on there very, very soon with my girlfriend. So I'm sure you guys will enjoy that once I get that edited, once I get back from my vacation. So take care, guys, and have a uh, safe weekend. Take care.